Bacillus thuringiensis. That is a mouthful. And if you are a caterpillar or a worm, it's probably the last mouthful you'll ever be taking. What is this BT that everyone's talking about? How does it work? And does it even work? I'm going to cover all of that for you and I'm going to show you if it actually works or if this is all just hype. So before we get caught up in the excitement or the anticipation of whether BT or Bacillus thuringiensis actually works, let's just take a step back and have a look at what is BT besides a mouthful. It is a soil-based bacteria that is found in soils all over the world. And because it's a naturally occurring bacteria, it is often referred to as a bioinsecticide. It's not made or synthesized by humans. It's propagated. The spores are reproduced to be able to make the quantities we need to use it as an insecticide. That's why it's called a bioinsecticide. But in essence, what it is, is it's a naturally occurring soil bacteria that reacts in a very specific way with very specific host insects. In essence, rendering them pretty much useless on specific plants when you use it. Like I mentioned, it's a bacteria. And how this bacteria in the soil grows, propagates, spreads, is through spores. And there are many different plants that use spores. I think the most commonly known one is the fern. Underneath the leaves, you've seen all these little spots. Those are spores. They are spread using, using those. Very importantly when it comes to Bt is different strains. You get quite a few different strains of them and most of them are pretty much harmless, like completely harmless to anything except for the target insects that it applies to. Now the categories of insect that Bt targets is moths and caterpillars mosquitoes and flies and then also beetles those are the three main categories and you will have different strains of bt depending on which one you have an issue with for me personally i am using bt in an attempt to combat caterpillars specifically the cabbage moth because if you've tried to grow brassicas in winter you'll know that it's an absolute nightmare when it comes to the cabbage, cabbage worm um, and trying to prevent those from just decimating your brassicas. So for me, I'm using that strain and that strain is called Kostaki. Probably not pronouncing it correctly, but it, it, it sounds pretty cool. Now you need to be aware that there is a highly, highly dangerous and toxic version of BT for bees. Obviously we're quite concerned with the health of bees in our gardens and our natural environments because they're the pollinators and we need to bring more of them into our gardens. So if we need to use something to combat a pest that doesn't have a lot of natural predators or is just really hard to keep at bay, we need to keep those beneficial, beneficial insects in our garden. And once again, I am probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but the strain of Bacillus thuringiensis or Bt that is highly toxic to bees is called Isoi. So if you are looking at getting this product, make sure you check the back, have a look at the, the ingredient. It'll tell you that it has the active ingredient Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis in it. It will more than likely tell you what strain it has if it doesn't tell you what the strain is, it's probably okay, but I personally am not sure I would risk it because one bad application of a bad product in your garden can really, really set you back quite substantially. So now we know there's a soil bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a unnecessarily complicated name for something as simple as Bt, and we know what it is. Now let's look at how does it work or how is it meant to work. Firstly, for Bt to work, it needs to be ingested. 
what this means for us as gardeners is if you listen around me you can hear the multitude of birds singing is it's not a contact based insecticide or application meaning anything that lands on a plant honeybirds drinking the nectar from plants bees getting pollen from the flowers and all of the other insects within your ecosystem that come into contact with Bt are not going to be impacted. It needs to be ingested and what happens is the proteins within the bacteria get transformed into toxins. Those toxins then start breaking down the gut lining in caterpillars or whatever the target insect group is which then ultimately causes them to stop eating and we know it happens from there. So once a caterpillar or a larva eats a leaf and it ingests it, you're looking at about one to five days for the Bt to start working and taking its toll on the, the insect. And what happens is because of the makeup of insects gut, it allows that protein to break down in a way that produces toxins. Unlike with humans, we don't have the enzymes that are required to break down that protein. And also it needs a very, very alkaline environment for the protein to actually break down. And usually what the, the, the pH that BT is looking for to be able to produce the toxins is around nine. And from the research I've done, most of the caterpillars and other bugs that BT is targeting have gut pHs that range from 9 to 10 and a half uh, in that range, which is why it is meant to be so incredibly effective. So how it works is pretty simple. It needs to be consumed. It needs the correct pH to be able to activate the breakdown of the protein to create the toxin which breaks down the intestinal lining of the gut in the insects, stop them eating and lead towards their death. Now how should you use it? I don't believe BT is a garden-wide application. The way I use it and I believe it is meant to be used is very, very specifically. For me, I only use it in winter on my brassicas. Cabbages, broccolis, mustards um, you can use it on your lettuces but i don't find that they have much of a much of an issue um, and then anything within the cabbage or brassica family your kales um, turnips rutabaga all of those are going to be impacted by the cabbage moth and if you've ever experienced it it lays hundreds of little eggs underneath they all hatch and they eat their way through the leaves and all you end up with are stalks no leaves which means the plant has no surface area for photosynthesis which means it uses whatever available energy it has in its roots to produce more foliage which means no more roots if you are growing root crops also why i believe it is so important to selectively apply bt is birds birds live in our gardens eating worms, caterpillars, insects, and if we just blatantly spray everything and we get rid of all of our worms and caterpillars, we're going to lose our birds. And from that, we're going to lose a big part of the ecosystem that we are trying to build. So my recommendation is don't spray Bt everywhere. Find the plants that are known to have the insects that you're trying to target in summer you can spray it on your tomatoes to combat the tomato hornworm. You can, and I do, also spray my citrus trees for that horrible citrus worm that can pretty much defoliate a tree within a couple of days. Then there's the corn borer, and there are a few others that you would use it in. But the most important thing is know your pest, know what you're trying to combat, and make sure that this is the correct product, that there isn't a more natural alternative and make sure that you only apply it to that specific area and let nature do its thing with the rest of it. Now, while we're talking about how it works, I also just want to quickly mention what it won't do. It won't target slugs and snails. If you have 
pristine, perfect cabbages as a result of Bt keeping the cabbage moth and cabbage worms away, you're probably still going to have a couple of nibbles from those pesky snails and slugs. That's just how it is. Bt doesn't work for snails and slugs. It also doesn't work for other pesky insects like snout-nosed beetles, shield bugs, anything like that. It is very, very specific to caterpillars and moths. Um, There's a strain for flies and mosquitoes that I mentioned and butterflies. So don't have expectations that it's going to do anything else because it won't. So as I make my way over to the ultimate answer of whether Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis actually works, let's have a quick chat about its toxicity. So when it comes to humans, it has no toxicity. Reason being is our guts are neutral to acidic, uh, specifically the stomach, and like I mentioned for Bt to work, it needs quite a high alkaline environment. So it doesn't have any effect on humans. In actual fact, it doesn't even reach, doesn't get much further than the stomach. And if it does, we don't have the enzymes to break down the proteins to release the toxins that make it so effective in other insects. And then when it comes to other mammals, same thing applies as with us. Other insects, once again, it needs to be ingested and most of the insects that we're trying to keep in the garden are the ones that don't eat all of our plants. So win-win situation there. So let's have a look down there and see if it works. I'm not gonna lie, there is nothing more devastating than coming out and seeing a plant that looks like that. Nothing but stalks. These are giant kohlrabis. You can see there's very little of them left. That was once a cabbage that was trying to grow. Pretty much nothing left. So does Bt work? I'm sorry but I don't have the answer here for you because this is the control group. This has not been sprayed with Bt and I wanted to show you the effects of Bt and whether it really works by having a real world control group. I think it's pretty clear here that these kohlrabis within the cabbage family have just been absolutely decimated. Now let's really go and see whether this worked or not. Finally we get to show some real world results. This is a beautiful cabbage. You can see one little spot there in the corner that's been nibbled by a slug, but otherwise it is in pristine shape. Right next to it is a kale that's sticking through the weeds, some broccoli, there's red Russian kale, and if we go further up, there's another beautiful, beautiful cabbage. These have all been sprayed with Bt, and if we go a little bit further back, we have a look at our puck choys. Our puck choys are just as beautiful. Nothing has been eaten besides you know, the odd slug damage here and there, but they are looking gorgeous. They've also been sprayed with Bt. Now one crop that's very prone to caterpillar damage is tatsoi. These tatsoi's, I've done a previous video on them that I'm happy to share up at the top with you, have not been touched by caterpillars. You can see a beautiful cabbage there in the background with beautiful colors. Another kale over there, nothing has touched it. But you can see no damage from caterpillars whatsoever. Also, as I've mentioned, some snail and slug damage, but otherwise all good. There's a rutabaga busy sticking up there and no caterpillars. Now remember those giant kohlrabis I showed you that were in pieces? These are the giant kohlrabis that I planted at exactly the same time in a different part of the garden that have been sprayed with Bt. You can see they are absolutely gorgeous. Another cabbage right behind it and over there quite a nice big rutabaga. Over here we've got broccoli. All in all, moving over slightly over here, this is broccoli the wrap, 
variety that I'm trying for the first time. Got some slug damage, but overall, no caterpillar damage. And then just because of its raw beauty, this red Russian kale, just owning its beauty and no damage, no caterpillars. So as I stand in front of this beautiful tamarillo behind me, I've also used BT on this plant because it got absolutely annihilated by little green caterpillars. The leaves at the bottom were decimated to the point of there was literally nothing left. Leaves at the top, no damage. So you don't have to use it on only your brassicas, but use it selectively. I saw this one was getting attacked, used it only on this plant. It is now thriving. Everything around it has its natural ecosystem. So ultimately the question is, Bacillus, Thuringiensis, or Bt, does it work? Hell yes, it works. It's highly, highly effective. If you have ever grown cabbages, broccoli, turnips, kale, anything from the brassica family, you will know how incredibly difficult it is to keep worms and the cabbage moth and cabbage cat caterpillar worms off your brassicas. I think the plants that I've showed you is evidence enough of how effective it is compared to the spindly little sticks that are left of the ones that I didn't treat with Bt. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out to the communities that you follow and that inspire you and please subscribe to my journey where I'm going to continue to share knowledge as and when I gain it and until next time happy harvesting